Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are we doing? Good to see you all out there. Good to see you too. How are you? I mean, good, good to see you two of two. I see two <laughs> of two people. This is welcome amazing. Everyone. All the Hello, best. Everyone. And welcome to the social pillar, everyone. We're back. An ongoing conversation about the value and um, of role playing games. They're cross cultures and communities in our world. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that we're coming to you from Aboriginal land, uh, from Darug land for myself. And we'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands we're streaming from and pay our respects to elders past and present and extend those respects to any First Nations people who are watching. My name's Ian Zammett. I'm from Roleplay Experience and we're here on the social pillar with my two colleagues of such lethal cunning here. Uh, Jared, would you like to introduce who Hello. you are? I'm Jared also known as the Game Master Chef. And uh, tonight I'm excited to talk about some inspiring things, but I think Thea would love to introduce herself. Thea, go for it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi. Oh hey, my gosh. You, you shouldn't hey, have. Hi, I am Thea, um, also known as OMGM. It is an absolute pleasure to be here. As you can see, I have clearly had too much sugar. Again. Okay, thanks for that. That is okay. I am so, you know what? It's not the sugar. It's definitely not the sugar and the lollies I had before the stream. It is absolutely being the company of such amazing humans as yourself that has kicked me into the realm of potentially hypomania. Hey, what are we doing, Ian? Yep, Purdy's on in the chat. Question. <laughs> Good to see you. Welcome, Purdy. Good to see you in the chat. And hey, welcome Purdy. everyone who joins us in the chat today. We want to be able to get your experiences from this too. This is a particular um, interesting episode. We can share our experiences because we're going to discuss creative tips and tricks for role playing. What inspiration brings your characters to life? Um, this has been really fun for us to prepare for because we've been talking a bit about what ways do we get into character. Um, and just to set this up, we talked a bit about how role-playing games are so incredible to be able to use your imagination, create characters to escape from your everyday life into another character, which is fantastic. Saying that, it's also been amazing over the last 10, 15 years or so to see the explosion of role-playing games around the world. And because of this, the popularity of such shows like Critical Role, uh, many other ones which are streaming, seeing people live playing this, and also um, it's gained huge popularity because voice actors and professional performers have really spruced up what the nature of the game is like, mm. being able to bring it out to people, and it's made it more mainstream. Mm. The wonderful thing about that is that more people are playing, which is fantastic, and seeing the value of connection. But something... We have seen, and you, we've talked a bit about this before, there have been a lot of DMs, um, games masters around, who have commented their feeling of inadequacy at the skill level of these DMs they get to see um, so popular and they don't feel they have the skills or feel it's not in their skill set, it's not in their, they don't feel comfortable actually being that kind of role-playing performative mm. kind of uh, games master. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on this, guys, as well? yeah truly well i think it's yeah it's not just uh like them not sorry because we both that... like yeah what we yeah. <laughs> it's it's not so yeah it's it's also um people having this this high ceiling of expectation now and so yeah. they feel like because their friends who they're playing D, &D with are also watching critical mm -hmm. role maybe they need to be as good like that's mm -hmm. such a silly thought but it does come about and also you know people compare themselves to others and i love the saying don't compare yourself to others compare yourself to who you were yesterday so mm -hmm. every day yeah. you can make an improvement and that's i think what the the kind of mm. culmination of this episode is going to be is like, what are these little things? What are the 1% changes uh, that can mm. make a big difference and, mm. and hopefully increase your enjoyment overall? I think, I mean, I think that is a, a really wonderful sentiment, but mm. we know GMs and DMs, we have a tendency to be overthinkers. And I mm -hmm. think when, and we want to, we want to entertain, you don't take on the DM role because you are the kind of person that enjoys just, you know, being carried along. You want to have input and 
what can mm. often go along with that is you want to do well. You want to have good input. You want to create something that's fun. And part of that, when you have um, games like Dungeons and Dragons, um, Blaze in the Dark, all that sort of thing being popularized by Twitch streamers, by YouTubers, by, you know, mm. television shows, mm. Stranger Things, where it is yeah. shown where you have actors, professional performers doing these things, mm -hmm. sometimes people might think that that is what they have to be. And it's not just GMs yeah. that have these insecurities, it's players too. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> it's funny you said that. I was just thinking of when you said Stranger Things just then as well about Eddie, the GM in the last season as well, who is yeah. phenomenal, but he's mm -hmm. so a uh, performer. Um, yeah. And it's like it can be actually even at your own table that there can be there's some people who are kind of natural performers who are there, which is great, but not everyone's like that. And some people feel a bit, yeah. could feel a bit overshadowed or feel a bit um, just overwhelmed by that kind of yeah. nature. And so we wanted to talk a bit about that tonight. So mm -hmm. everyone out there, welcome Kit Kat. Good to see you back and welcome everyone else in the chat. Today we're going to talk about beyond that uh, that expectation. Uh, I love that you two both actually mentioned about the expectation that got kind of set up because things became popular and that comparison. And I love yes. that phrase you said, Jared, as well, compare yourself to yesterday. That's probably the only comparison you need and how you're growing. Mm. So it's, session, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is, the, yeah, session, that idea. This is beyond just the game sponsors as well. It's players. Yeah. So we're looking yeah. at showing that yeah. RPGs are not just for professional performers. Mm. They're meant to be for anyone to explore, to create, to try out playing a different character with imagination mm. and creativity and craft. You don't need a degree or any formal training to do this. In fact, really promote for people to give it, give it a go, just give it a try and to immerse yourself yeah. in characters. And I so, think one of the really important things to jump over the top of Ian, as we want to do, um, is that there is a lot of different ways to do that. And I think that's something that, mm. for me at least, I wanted to really emphasise um, in our discussions tonight is that this performative aspect, this getting into character, that means different things to different people. Now, it could be yeah. that you embody the character. It could be that you have a magnificent voice and accent for your character. Mm. Or it could be that you sit there quietly and you talk in the third person the entire time, and that's great for you. You're having just as much fun. So I think it's really important that we kind of call that out, that mm. you can – that performance and that role play – is hugely broad. We're not talking stage shows. We're, uh, no. well, not all the time. We'd like to, but <laughs> it doesn't have to be that fun. way. Yeah. Yeah, so you're completely agree. I think probably kicking off with the whole idea of, of voice acting or physical mm. acting, body language, that kind of thing. How yeah. what are your experiences um, of at your table? How do you feel for yourself? And mm. how, what do you enjoy seeing uh, in others as well? Mm. Jared, do you want to kick this one off? Because I think sure. in terms of voice, uh, you've I mean, certainly got a lot more range. I, I, I do I do bring that uh, skill to the table and I pride myself in being able to hear and mimic accents and voices. Um, but everything that you guys have just been saying has hit home so solidly because I have recently decided to pitch to my uh, co-workers that we have a team building D&D game. And I already knew a couple of people were going to be into it, but I have encouraged a couple of people to give it a shot. Some young, some young uh, technicians, some apprentices, and they have no idea what it is. One of them says, "No, I'm not even. I'm not imaginative. I'm not whatever." And then the other one said, "Yeah, I know what it is. I watch Stranger Things." <laughs> and I've been thinking all afternoon, getting excited about it. And something that I, I I needed to kind of realize is that these are going to be people who maybe just no idea what they're doing and i need to just say just be whoever you want to be you need to have a character name that's the only thing i want to stipulate but <laughs> if you want to play it as like you that's fine it doesn't matter yes. i'm gonna bring voices and theater and action and dramatic yeah. scenes and all of this sort of stuff because that's what i want to do and i want to make yeah, this yeah. one session special so yes Mm -hmm. That's what I like mm. to bring because I have a big impact at the table. And I think, as you were also saying, Thea, people want to mm. bring a lot of content, a lot of ideas that the GM mm. really is the foundation, you know, um, and, and you do. So you what are some of the things of you do? You flesh it out. What do mm. I do? Great. Good. Good. Specifically. So, yeah. 
I will summarize a very basic technique that you can find a really good tutorial for on YouTube. I'll find a link. And if you guys want to check that out, it'll be in the Discord in the after show chat. We're going to be hanging out for a couple of minutes afterwards if you want to dive into any of these things. Basically uh, controlling pace. So how fast are you speaking? What purpose do your words have when you say things? Or do you speak really rapidly? suddenly the tone and the pitch and the change and, and things like that suddenly have an impact. So if I then pitch up, I do go lofty sometimes. And sometimes it's really nasty and in the back of the throat and mm -hmm. you have to practice things like this. Mm. And other times you can go very low and you can change the pitch and you can bellow mm. and then you can add an accent and you can add some body language and throw your jaw around a little bit. And suddenly there's quite the character. That's <laughs> what I would do is you start with those layers, find out where your range is, where you're comfortable, but your pace, your pitch. Yeah. Oh God, mm. I could bring up my entire matrix. I'm going to look that up in the background. <laughs> Thea. Uh-huh. Uh, um, yeah. I throw, I throw that could be an episode in its own. Let's go. Um, yeah, so I have a fairly distinct voice. Um, it's quite high pitched. And while I can drop it down and slow it down, and I have done a lot of presenting, etc. cetera, um, mm. I am more limited in my ability to, I guess, voice different mm. voices. Um, and that's a confidence thing as well. Mm. Um, there are certain accents that I can maintain and certain accents, like a Scandi accent, I cannot manage for more than a sentence. So for me, in terms of that performance, it's much more kind of physicality and that kind of kind of more stage performance type stuff um, mm. in that I will hold myself in a certain way when I'm speaking as the wise elf, the kind and caring, or if I'm not certain, I will still use my voice, mm. but my physicality changes. And so I think for me it is much more about physically. So I, I know that I am quite conscious when I'm standing or when I'm sitting to try and control the energy level at the table. And I think potentially that's because I do have a dance background. I'm not good, but mm. I did have a dance background. Um, and it's more of that performance and also physical comedy. So I think that that's that, um, how your background, like your experiences and your backgrounds certainly influence what you can bring as a DM. But mm. I've also played with people who uh, use their own voice and they just tell an incredibly enthralling story mm. and they just have that charisma. Mm. I really love how you said as well that it's like for you, it's, it's so different for the two of you too because, Jared. <laughs> I know your voices. I can't wait to play in a game of yours yes. with your GM as well because I can't yes. wait to hear all those voices you do. But also, Thea, uh, I've played in all your games and I know how enthralling it is. You, 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 The range that Jarrett has, that's not the mm -hmm. kind of focus that you have. Yours is the telling of the story and you do mm -hmm. have a range of voices as well that you bring to it. And it's just different. It's going, you both said about comfortability and I think that's a really important point. Um, and I wanted to bring into a point that's coming to the chat from Aunty Mimi. Thank mm -hmm. you for this and Purdy for backing that up. Do um, being shy and playing a game because I don't feel creative, but the actual playing of the game becomes creative. And it's like yeah. the, um, she gave a suggestion of um, doing yoga. You feel a bit shy to do that because you're not flexible, but the actual doing of yoga makes you flexible. Yeah. And that's a really important sure. point. So I'm very keen. I completely agree. There's something yeah. about this too. I think playing to your strengths is one side of it, but also this is a place where you have an opportunity to try things and to go with the things that you feel you want to try or you feel maybe you're not comfortable with yet, but this is a place where you can have a safe space to create and you can try different things. And it's great because you've got all yeah. these different people to pull from yes. their different mm. abilities. That, yeah. Yeah. I think that's actually something that DMs, have, we talk a bit about, you know, DMs have certain powers and responsibilities. With great power comes great responsibility. But I think this is one of them. And I think something that I'm very conscious of when I'm running a game is to make people feel comfortable however they feel comfortable role-playing, even when you have a range of people. 
And I'm kind of thinking of like the game, one of the games that I'm running, well, the series of games that I run at the moment, because I have a range of people who are exploring their kind of role play. I have mm-hmm. one player who is just starting to stretch out and step into voicing their character. Mm-hmm. I have another who does the complete voice acting, has an amazing voice, um, mm-hmm. who embodies it. Uh, we have people that sort of wear, you know, little clo- not co- not full cosplay, but some cosplay. And I have some mm-hmm. people that talk in their own voice with their own accent. And they vary between third person and first person. And I work really, I don't know if I work really hard, but I'm really conscious of making that okay Um, Mm -hmm. and making sure that all of those can work in a game. And I think that is something that a GM um, can do is to make people feel comfortable. And no one feels pressured to do a voice. Mm -hmm. And also no one laughs at someone who does a voice that might not land. That's Mm -hmm. okay. It's about that point you made, Ian, about safety, having a safe place to play. Yeah. Do you feel like something like Jared is similar for you? Is that right? Yeah. That whole idea of a GN's encouragement. Yeah. Inclu- inclusi- inclusivity, acceptance, creating that safe space, vocalizing that what you are trying to accomplish is a safe space for people to do whatever they want, be comfortable, stretch themselves. Uh, and encourage that and and even uh we skipped one of my regular sessions this week we played Baldur's gate 3 instead and everything <laughs> was brilliant everyone was gushing over it and i said guys we can mm. describe things like this like all of these spell effects and mm. all of this run with it just just bring some visualization yeah. to the table um mm. because i feel like that's the next step in this group's particular evolution i do find myself kind of nurturing and encouraging groups to do certain you know certain mm. things and i hope that that behavior mm. spreads across the community as a whole and this is mm. why we why we want to talk about it because it is important to yeah. provide both both a place to be yeah. who you are and who you want to be that yeah and that's think, safe space thing i think sorry Thea, yeah. what were you gonna say i was just gonna say i think purdy makes a really good point um that creativity mm. is not quantifiable but it does ebb and flow mm. and i think that's a really yeah. important thing to recognize with your players as well and in yourself you know being mm. kind to yourself is that sometimes you're just not going to feel like painting the world yeah. um mm. and sometimes your players will be flat but they still want to play mm. and that's okay <laughs> And that's the encouraging thing too, I think, for games masters. If you're providing a space, more than anything, it's mm-hmm. that try. Yeah, give it a go. And failing and trying again, the idea of failing is a bad thing. It's actually just trying, giving it a go. You yeah. get more confident. I love uh, also, I mean, you brought it up and Purdy followed that up about the more you do it, the more confident you get. If you've got mm-hmm. a safe space that you can set up as a games master that makes people mm-hmm. feel confident to try different ways of being creative, whether it is voicing, yeah. acting or body language or any of the other things we're about to talk about, mm-hmm. it just gives a chance of having fun trying stuff and then it just yeah. becomes easier and you feel more yeah. confident to try things. So, yeah. yeah, it's definitely part of that, making that a safe space. Talking of creativity um, mm. and sort of some of the things we wanted to talk about, I was thinking of a player from Dimension 20 um, mm. because she is remarkable. She doesn't do voices so much. She doesn't, she sort of moves around, but she's not the most physically active. It's em- um, Emily Axford. And yeah. she yeah. writes it's amazing. the most in depth backstories and plans. Like she will write a journal full. Um, for her characters, and all of her characters are incredibly fleshed out. Even though mm. she's not doing too much of a funny voice, I mean, she's an actor, she's amazing, but mm. she's not pushing that. It's the fact that the characterization is there, and I think that's another way that people can be really mm. creative without having to, you know, put on a voice or, a, or an accent. Yeah. Do you How feel, do you I mean, yeah. well, I do agree, and actually you've kind of se- seamlessly gone into the first of the options we're thinking outside of actual physical acting and voice acting. But it's like you're right. The the actual how much like work do you guys do for characters in particular? Your most important characters, whether as a games master or as a player, uh, how much writing do you do, or have you noticed in your players? Yeah, that's mm. really interesting because I am mm. in terms of prep. I do a lot mm. of what I like to call subconscious processing, which an unkind person would say is a way of uh, labelling lack of preparation. Uh-huh. Mm. But in fact, I do a lot of thinking about story, thinking about characters, thinking about possibilities, but I don't write them out so much. But I do know the key events in some of the, M- the NPC stories. Yeah. Um, like I have one ongoing NPC who is yet to emerge in the latest story arc, but 
they're coming, mm. um, who is there. So I find it, yeah, I don't write in-depth backstories, I think, compared to some that I've seen, but I do prepare key points and kind of those shaping elements in either my character's mm. backstory. Now that I'm thinking about it, I actually come up with a thing that they value, like what yeah. is it that's important to them. Mm. Um and I find that helps me knowing what they value and what is important and what their goal is or yep. not even their goal, just what is important to them. To me, that mm. helps. That's enough for me to build a character around. How about you guys? How about you, Jared? Yeah, very similar approach. Um, I would say as much backstory as a, a campaign requires to flow smoothly would be mm. my quick answer there. But I do something very similar, I guess, Thea. But I, yeah, again, like I'll have in my in my database in my in my notion for my campaign um i'll have an entry for a, an npc i will have the stat block and everything but then i like to have uh, a side plot their fears their motivation any secrets and then just mm -hmm. general traits maybe about the race mm -hmm. or about their culture um so that's what i would like to do for most of my npcs and then mm -hmm. th there are ways to encourage players like if you if you as a player want to pitch this to your dm um if you don't have inspiration by the end of a session uh i know that some dms uh, will give inspiration if somebody writes a journal entry from their character's perspective between mm -hmm. sessions yeah and that's okay. so useful as a gm like I value players' notes far over my own, and we'll be talking about note taking mm. in an upcoming episode. Um, because mm. what they what what a player values to write down is what they value and what should be important. Uh, so, if they're writing notes and drawing little pictures and start doing the, what's fun and creative for them between sessions, um, you know, I've got I've got groups that are making their characters in Baldur's Gate three, and then just using the art in the character creator for their actual D and D. Mm. So, doing something fun mm. in, in between sessions to flesh out your character to to tie them into yeah. the world, that's what I would I'd be encouraging because it's a it's so useful and give that to your game mm. master because then your game mm. master gets a gets an actual idea of your character's mentality and mindset as well. It's, I get a rush when I see players and they like present and I have very particular players I'm thinking about and they've written all this stuff like this is my backstory mm -hmm. where it comes from this is the and I'm like this is awesome it gives so yeah. many ideas as a games master go yeah. oh how can I make this work I want to make I want to make this yeah. work and it's only this exactly. touches on what we talked about earlier how we games masters are those kind of people who want everyone to have a good go and want to include the ideas that they have and I think that is a if you're feeling that out there as a player guys you're a natural GM. <laughs> this is it. I think there's that encouragement aspect. I absolutely yeah. like. It is inspiring to read that. And I wanted to touch on something briefly before we talk about other options too. But it's mm -hmm. funny because you said about backstory. That's one thing that people love writing up because it's such good hooks mm -hmm. into their character or the world that you've started creating and people who continue to journal note or anything like this as they go. I've mm -hmm. also noticed players who love I've got one player who writes an amazing inventory and he's right across it and what everybody has and he says this is how I do it and I utilize it and he's engaged with it this way and so the whole team relies on him to note <laughs> what have we got have you got this oh no that's in this pocket this is in this bag of holding this is in this actual section and how I'm carrying here amazing yeah. and it's like, it's like if you're different. getting that it's like it's inspiring it's great because you're like I know who's got all the items. I can rely on this player. Yeah. He's got it all there, and so I can keep track of it. It's it's yeah. great. Yeah. So this yeah, is so true. We'd love yeah. to hear anyone else chat. Just a reminder as well while we're there, if you've got things that inspire you to bring your characters to life, please share them uh, as well. I love that Sammy Slick was talking about failing flashily and it reminded absolutely <laughs> fail fast, fail often. It reminded me of skiing. I was taught exactly the same thing. It's like failing is not a bad thing. If you yeah. fall and if you fall down, that's fine. That's great. You, you, I fell so many times and they said, if you're going to fall, just mm. fall into it. Just go into it because you're going to get better. And I did. Yeah. And it was fantastic because the more you did it, the more you started to work yourself out. And so it's just trying stuff mm. is amazing. It's a really good advice there. Um, yeah. 
So another option as well, because it's talking a bit about the inspiration of writing, but that whole idea of there's that catharsis of actually writing stuff down, and I'm a massive proponent of it. But for some people, it's actually drawing is a bigger yeah. thing. Have you guys got a bit of that knack for drawing things as well for your characters? Mm. Alas, I do no. not. I cannot draw. <laughs> Um, I wish I could, Mm. but I have known players that were incredible artists Mm. Um, and that's how they can remember things is that they will um, capture their character or a key moment in pictures, something that they've drawn. Yep. Um, And it's amazing. Um, Sorry, I got distracted, but... That's not unlikely. <laughs> but yeah, I but I think it's it's an interesting one as well. And this is something we talked about in previous streams when we were talking about AI. I as mm. much as there is controversy about AI art, um, which is justified because artists should be paid and recognized for their work and shouldn't yeah. be stolen. At the same time, AI or generative art has allowed a lot of people to capture visually things that they may not have yeah. previously. Like to articulate it from their head, images. Yeah. 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 So be able Mm -hmm. to get things out because some people don't want to write down a lot of story and write sort of and they feel intimidated or they feel uncomfortable. They just don't like it because it's boring writing down a whole bunch of stuff but they can capture something in an image and then being able to then see that is fantastic. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Jared? What do you think? Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've, I love uh, players who are artists um, and and people who want to create cool things for their for their games. You know, bring a mm-hmm. dice box or a knickknack or a whatever it is. I um, I've I've given away you know like props and stuff to players. I got a wizard in one of my games. Props. Give them a leather yeah. covered book. You know, a little uh, little ma- handmade parchment with leather cover leather cover as a little. Thing. Yep. I've given, you know, nice. dice to players and, and stuff to encourage them to, you know, one of them's now got a whole bunch of blue dice because I started them off mm. with a set of blue dice. And, and yeah, and then I've got players who absolutely will do the journal entry, a captain's log, he's the captain of the spell jamming ship. And on the other page, he will draw something from that session. So he, he combines, you know, the two of them. Um, but yeah, also like bringing your characters to life, whether you, uh, you know, you do go out on, on uh, what's it, Fiverr and things like that. You can get people to yeah. draw art for them yeah, so you can support yeah. you know, small Commission. artists who yeah. do great, great little jobs for you. And you can have your D&D party put together. It's a really, really good idea mm. if you don't happen to have someone there. It's such a mm. beautiful way to connect to your... Uh, connect to your game, connect to your character. Um, and then there's things like Hero Forge if you really want to make a whole mini. Um, but it's a great yeah. way to remember. Hero Forge but, is good, know, yeah. yeah. Hero Forge is fantastic. Because so, it has, mm. particularly, I mean, for uh, Dungeons & Dragons players or for fantasy role players in particular, Hero mm. Forge is kind of perfectly built to be able to mm. bring to life all those different kinds of um, ancestries and sort of like and classes mm-hmm. that you've been wanting to play, but you wanted to bring it in your own way to customize yeah. it, which is fantastic. Especially if you may not feel great at drawing yourself, mm-hmm. you've got this online thing you can do. Um, it rhymes that there's a few friends of mine, one in particular, Pete, he's a good mate of mine um, that I play with, and he is drawing in every session in the middle of while he's talking, and he's doing these amazing artworks of either the creatures we're facing or his character or other characters and also playing with the 10 year olds earlier this year i had to actually stop we actually had to have a seek a separate thing at the beginning of the game where they could show off their drawing because they were spending oh, some of the fantastic. game actually drawing and i was like yeah okay, we're, gonna, we're gonna split it so we have some yeah. time actually to draw so you can also show it off and yeah. it's it's inspiring in that way too because it also then gives them the energy to kind of like use that as a kind of leap mm. into the game um and on that i wanted to check with you Thea, because you talk about this too it's not so much mm. just about the drawing of images but the inspiration mm. from images to bring characters yeah. to life because you've mentioned yeah. that too it is. So that's something that I do is um, because I have elements of executive dysfunction and can't always remember things, for, to remind myself and give me cues for characters, I'll yeah. use pictures. Um, I'll take things from movies, from TV shows, from art. Mm. I um, I think we talked about last time I use a lot of classical artworks. Mm. Um, was that one episode or two episodes ago? No, in, in episode or so ago we talked about that. 
Mm. Last week, seven whole days, guys. Um, <laughs> but I like to use that to get into character because it, for me, that works as a cue. So say, for example, yeah. I've got a um, very distinguished elderly elf kind of male identifying character. Um, yeah. I may or may not have a picture from a university lecturer that I had many years ago who embodies those. Um, it's from LinkedIn. It's publicly sourced. It's not working. <laughs> but I use that as a reminder. And in my notes for a game, I'll have that picture there. Yep. Um, I'll yep. use things like just a simple, like a vocal cue. If I am trying, mm. trying for some kind of accent, I'll have some kind of phrase that reminds mm. me. Um, I, this is a relatively child-friendly stream, but I do have a character that has a very Australian saying, something to do with spiders and what you <laughs> need to do with them. Um, and that reminds me of what that character is like. So mm. I like to use that um, because mm. I find that as a really, it, for me, that is a little cue. And maybe that's something that other GMs can find helpful as well or do find helpful is mm. that I've got those little hints um, because it's, when I say I don't prepare a lot, it's I do have cues and those key yeah. elements and reminders and triggers for that. Yeah. yeah. Do you have do you have something similar, Jared? For sure. Yeah, Theo, you, you mm. nailed it right at the end there. It's like my entire idea of prep is what little information do I need to spark mm. a beautiful yeah. Yeah. conversation role playing game? Um, and that, and that can be an image. And I love that I play from a, a tablet where I can quickly flip it around, show character art to the players. Like that's invaluable mm. to me. Yeah. Um, you yeah. Know, when you've got the, when you've got the books and stuff and the and the stuff, I always I always did that. So now mm. it's so nice to be able to just put it on a nice big you know eleven inch screen, whatever it is, and just chuck that up yeah. there. It's great for them. Mm. And then on the back of my GM screen, I've got a nice. A GM screen with like custom slots to put pages and stuff. So I've got what mm. the crew, who the crew of the ship are, because they're just a bunch of NPCs mm. and, and all of that. But I will have uh, art like the maps and things like that that I need at hand as well. So you can do that in a digital space, yeah. virtual tabletops, yep. which I'm sure is your approach, Theo. Um, you know, <laughs> having, having it there. But I, I also I worked I prep digitally, um, but then yeah. I do have these physical things around me. Um, I always like to get my minis out uh, at the start mm, of the session yeah. for all the, I mean, it just makes yep. sense. Like get all your minis out that you're going to use for a session. And then they're all just sitting there and oh, then you get excited. When you get your, and then you get your excited with the big bad. And then the players might yeah. go to the bathroom and sneak and like get spooked out as to why the hell you have a beholder behind. So I will actually do that. I will pull a red, red herring beholder out and just put it behind red the screen. Red herring dragon. Yeah, because oh my they, God, will do that. They, they have to walk behind me to get to the bathroom. <laughs> so it'll be right there. <laughs> where they can see. Um, I love that. How to freak your players out. <laughs> yeah. as well. I feel like that's something game, we should speaking. talk about. We have talked about the theatrics game. of playing. Mm -hmm. um, Distraction. Yes. <laughs> oh, Mr. Well. Absolutely. Like I will um I will use like some of the battle maps uh, that I have and I'll have yeah. little cues in there yes. to things that could happen. Yeah. Um, and I find that a really helpful thing. I try to make them objects, mm. but I don't always. Sometimes it's all just the flat map. Um, yeah. oh. 1920s, it's a painted backdrop. But I think it is, to me, that's really helpful to mm. have. Oh, hello. 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 We have a something being bought out. Got stuff but yeah, the maps. So I use maps. maps. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> Oh, that looks, looks beautiful. Great. Oh, cool. Tell it's invisible. Them. You need to stick your head out the yeah. top. Yeah. 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 like a dress, Jared. There we go. Oh, the ship. This is a normal fantastic. Way. You know that thing yeah. from Baldur's Gate? Oh, fantastic from Spelljammer. I drew a normal Yeah. Way. That's great. It could be a maximum move. Sorry. Anyway. And then this is, <laughs> this is the player's ship. That's amazing. See, oh, I, took, wow. I took the time to do it once and do it properly, and then we reuse it every session. It's great. Yeah, that is, that's is that the a thing. Chess X sheet? That's this so is cool. a Chess X battle map, not sponsored. I've had it for yeah. years. It's frame. Yeah. It sticks out the top yeah. of my my bag yeah. when I'm riding my motorcycle. And these mm. are Crayola ultra washable markers. Pro tips. That's why I've got all the beautiful colours because these do not use nice. normal whiteboard markers for anyone who knows. Yeah. I use whiteboard uh, markers. You have to use. They recommend uh, what is it? Overhead projector wet mm. erase yeah. markers that have to be yeah. wet. These are mm. ultra washables. They come off. They come off on your hand, real easy. That's how easy mm -hmm. it is. He's wearing the ships. <laughs> I am the ship. 
Um, so yeah, it comes off real easy. Water and a cloth. Yes. Don't yes. leave it on so there cool. too long. That's just hard. It's to funny. Think. You mentioned maps, but see, I'm also inspired as well by having the map out before and and having miniatures out and laying it out. It's funny yeah. too because it's like part of the story side of things. I mean, there's the combat side, if you want to call it this side, this pillar mm -hmm. of the game is part of the fun of the story as well for a lot of the, the games that we play. And for me, it's actually one thing is to imagine it, but to be able to lay out and then have these things in a way and place on a beautiful map um, that ins is inspiring. You can think of, oh, oh, you can use this terrain. This is what's going to happen here. So it'll be hard for them yeah. to get across here. And it helps build the story for you so that when you're actually mm -hmm. running it later, you can say, this is what happens over here. Oh, you interact over here. Well, this was what happens when you crash into the, you step onto this and it crashes below you because it doesn't yeah. hold your weight or whatever it is. Yeah. And then you can see the, the, the um, what's it called? Proximity, proxemics, mm -hmm. I think it is, and spatial awareness of the the oh. the scene that you're trying to create yeah. it's really inspiring to see something that you can interact with and i love beautiful maps Absolutely. to get inspired yeah. from yeah yeah there's, a, there's a, a subtle cue to that there's some environmental storytelling going on there yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> the images so, yeah, the images that come so through powerful. are fantastic yeah yeah yeah, like there's probably no quicker uh, shortcut to immersion is actually putting out minis, putting out cool mm. terrain, beautiful, mm. beautiful, beautifully drawn or rendered mm. or use, mm. you know, use an application. Or if you've got the terrain, I'm fortunate again yeah. at the game store that I play, mm. I'll use one of those maps, but then I get to put a whole bunch of cool stuff around yeah. it, you know, because there's a bunch mm. of war gamers and stuff. So it's all, it's all kind of gothic and strangely, you know, sci-fi. Yeah. But um, mm. it works. We're talking ambience. We're talking setting yeah. a scene. Atmosphere. Yeah. And work yeah. with immersion. That's funny. And I think um, that's, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Theo. Go ahead. No, you go in. Yeah. No. Actually, well, actually, we're actually. just about to jump into that. We're just about to talk about other other ways that you can be inspired to uh, mm. bring your characters to life and the scenes that you're in as well on the table. Yeah. So this is a really good point. What are, like, miniatures and battle maps and terrain and things like that? What's mm. your – What's how does it affect you as well and inspire you to tell the story of your characters or that you've seen with players? I think that's um, – that's really interesting because going back to where we started this evening's chat, talking about you can go for all out. You can have the full mm. voice actors and the cast and the costumes, but mm. you can also have just have a single prop that's quite inspiring or a single mini that's inspiring or a picture yeah. that's inspiring. And and I think, you know, to kind of get back to our, our thesis we're talking about is we don't just want to say that you have to have all these things. Mm. So for me, I've had mm. excellent games that were theatre of the mind, Mm -hmm. um, but a person just had a single picture. Yeah. They just had sort of a darkened sort of forest type image mm -hmm. and that was enough or a somewhat mysterious mask. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, you know, we talk about all these amazing things that you can use, but I think also you can have just a single thing. You can have something that inspires you that you don't show to your players. You can have your mm -hmm. dice. Oh, mm -hmm. I mean, I've got my, where are they? Okay. Hey, Samar. Okay, <laughs> Samar. Now, yeah, I don't know if you can there. see it. I think you can. Yeah. You've got two types of dice in there. I've got the sharp black ones and I've got the soft. Oh, and I'm seeing a reflection of what I can see. Nice. Yeah. Behind the scenes, Whoa. guys. Um, but you can see I've got the sharp, yeah. uh, sharp, and then I've got awesome. the coffer. Copper. The coffer. The coffee. I've got the coffee yeah. dice. Coffee. Copper. But they <laughs> are a way for me to remember just like a, a sharpness to a character or yeah. a softness yeah. or a feel, so colours. So that inspiration, I think, can mm -hmm. be something as small as that, like having a set of dice yeah. that I use for a particular NPC and there's the one that is, yep. you know, the sweet, innocent child who absolutely is not going to betray the, the party to the, you know, the prickly old hag and you're making a whole bunch of assumptions and why did you cast Shatter at this poor old woman who was just trying to give you some muffins? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it can be like that. So that's something mm. that's for me. What about you guys? Yeah, I think Jared, how about you? Oh, yeah. Everything, everything. Like I, I love <laughs> metal dice as well. I'm on metal yep. dice, and 
Mm. You know, it's the little things like, oh, this seems like a really mm. important role. I'll throw the heavier dice. <laughs> like, yes. you know, it's little things yeah. that make you feel <laughs> like so this was a, this is a more important role. It deserves something special. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have, if it's that, do you have the, it makes the, game the deadly die? The deadly die. Do you have no, a specific, I, like. No. I mean, <laughs> when I was like, playing, like, it depends. Like, if it's a big bad, hell's yeah. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I like to just choose different color. Like, for convenience sake, I'll just choose three completely <laughs> weird colored dice. So, you know. Yeah, purple, yeah. Whatever, whatever the Puss in Boots color is. And like, if I'm rolling 3d20s, I just want to be able to go, that's this, 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 and this, and that's these yeah. guys attacking. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if there's a big bad and it's important rolls, it's the special dice, it might be out in the open. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just a quick table. It's the Dimension 20 Docks of, Docks of Boom? Yeah, the tray of the- Box of Doom. Box of it is just it's big important yeah. roles. It's an oh, open yeah. and it's an open it's a, role it's a big thing. and it's for really important things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's cool. that. You know, make make an event out of it for sure. Um, it sounds like really it's being inspired as things. that you're being inspired as well on the fly by the things like saying, "Oh, look, this mm -hmm. is an important one. Let's bring this out into the open for everyone." You're like, yeah, yes, and it kind of raises, it changes the nature of the game for everyone because, like, oh, mm -hmm. this is the serious one, so that yeah. becomes a part of the the excitement and how it shifts it can shift the game so yeah. I, was, I was thinking about those different things that people do because you said about props as well because you said mm. dice are particularly a prop yeah. but i love maps that you can actually pick up or handouts yeah. that you give to people <gasps> or the players people things. yes oh, yes yeah. <laughs> What are props you've given out in your games as well? Mm. Oh, I love giving out a map or a part of a um, a part of a puzzle. So mm. I I love tangrams. Um, yeah, I no, really no. enjoy. I do a lot of tangram puzzles in my um, games. So anyone who doesn't know, a tangram is where you have a whole bunch of tr little triangles and little squares and little shapes, and you're given a picture and you have to create that picture with the little puzzles and things that you've got. Um, I love to give that to my players because mm. it's so tactile and it gets them involved in solving the puzzle. But I mm. also was thrown back to some of the Collecticon games that we've run where people have had spell scrolls. Some of our sponsors and some of our just yeah. wonderful members of our community have made spell scrolls and i'm like oh look at it i can use this in a game and you can mm -hmm. hand it to people mm -hmm. i love doing that stuff and even if i'm feeling a little bit flat in a game having that just adds that energy level it's an, it's an outside thing that yeah. i don't have to bring the energy the players bring the energy does that kind of make sense or am i going yeah, yeah. Off it's a sense yeah. of wonder that something yeah. something new gets brought in and i love like Oh, where is she from? I'm trying to think of which which uh, of the sponsors it is. But she burns the edges of the scroll so it yeah. looks like it's oh, old yeah. and it's like she's actually mm -hmm. put them into tea. Like yeah. so it actually has that kind of like brown kind of look at it. I love that kind of mm. stuff. And if you've – I was I was very um, – I was looking at this particular um, player um, – who may be on tonight as well, um, mm -hmm. but uh, who actually had a character who was very much into herbology and is a druid. And ah. there was this book, because we talked a lot about her character, funnily enough, she also writes a lot, and yep. um, that really inspired the story. And so this book came out on Kickstarter in particular that was this, mm -hmm. the one that we've talked about, the um, uh, herbal what, journal. Week? There's a herbal yeah. journal, and that one, so I got that to give to her in game and i said this Aww. literally is all available this is a, a reference book you can use as well um hilariously she'd already bought it but that's not a story but she loved it <laughs> i bought you this present <laughs> <laughs> and this is it's like that's now like in game something to be able to use and i love that kind of mm. stuff so that it's like and it also has the tactile kind of thing too mm. it's inspiring so yeah, yeah. I've, I love being able to and seeing that players who bring stuff about their character into game mm. is fantastic. Um, but I was sort of thinking as well, um, anything else, Jared, as well, is there anything that you've seen in particularly uh, props wise? Because mm. I know you talked about, I think Curse of Strahd kind of gives a lot of hints towards propage and that kind of thing mm. as well. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's a replayable yeah. system that they built into it with the Taroka deck. Sorry, I was just talking in chat to uh, Auntie Mimi about music. We can we can come to that in a second. Oh yeah, um, yeah, 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 music, great way to elevate your game in the right way. Um, 
Mm-hmm. But what we're talking about props, it comes with props, oh, the book yeah. doesn't the, the, the module yeah. doesn't come with a Taroka deck, but it's a product yeah. you can get. It's mm. highly encouraged. Uh, Ian, you have an OG one which I didn't even know know existed uh, from, <laughs> which is so cool. And <laughs> but, uh, immediately, uh, there's an interaction and a role play experience where you meet this yeah. fortune teller, and she tells the fortune. Now it's kind of encouraged to. Yeah. We determine those five cards mm. um, because it determines where <laughs> yeah. you find other like key magic items, which could themselves be props. Mm-hmm. Um, we did have mm. an amulet uh, that we that we had for our symbol of Ravenkind. Um, you know, just little things like the little things mm. like that. So, um, yeah, absolutely, it's, yeah. it's such a quick, quick, easy way to elevate the game. Um, you know, and then there's full, yeah. full. You can go crazy full costume and do cosplay. Um, yeah. which is also mm. super fun. Like uh, Thea, when we've when we've done the one yeah. shot, and Lauren was dressed up as Jester, mm. super cool. Um, yeah. you know, and and I imagine it like conventions and stuff when when you dress up, so yeah. you look like a sorceress just about every time you DM at, at cons. It's yeah. great. <laughs> You know, and I think yeah. that that's actually interesting. I had a player um, who just signed up for the day for one of the convention games that we were running who dresses as her D and D character. That is her cosplay. Yeah. You know, and it was it's great. so good. She had so Someone many it. pockets, yeah. um, <laughs> but it was great. And that was how they got into their character. And yeah. I, I occasionally do that. I think I've had you know um, games at conventions where I've dressed as the mountain, mm. uh, where I've dressed as a forest. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. yeah, well, okay, well, like a blue dress with sparkles, or I wore that. But that is that small. It's, it's cosplay minor, I guess. Mm-hmm. It does. The small C. Do you find that yeah. though too that? The wearing of it, you both, do you find that the wearing of something with ca- just oh helps God, yes. you be yeah. in character so much? Yeah. I have yeah. a hooded dressing gown that I will wear when I'm playing some of my darker games online. So yeah. it's a dressing yeah. gown, but it has a hood and I can pull mm-hmm. it down and I go all kind of Assassin's Creed. It's cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so cool. I was thinking yeah. that as well. Actually, Absolutely. when you mentioned earlier before we were talking about the Taroka deck, which is like a tarot deck in, in many ways, to be able to get that fortune-telling kind of feel to it. I played that a bit with some friends as well, and I deliberately got this hunched oh. over, turned the lights down, had a lantern nearby so we could play it under mm. that light. And it's just awesome. It's so much fun. Oh, yeah. um, Actually, you know what else I use? What's that? I use... Uh, lights. Lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Lighting. I will oh, use yeah. lighting. Uh, so, so when I'm playing, you know, change the mood. So the a red kind of light. <laughs> yeah, a background. Yep. You know, well, you know, well, we're in a forest or something. Everything so is cool. Yeah. yeah. yeah like That's honestly, so a kind of, contextual, a yeah. contextual scene, super useful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Such yeah. a good idea to set uh, set tone and everything. Yeah. Since we talked about the um, lighting, but you just mentioned as well, uh, responding to chat, music, and audio. How do you use it, James? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's something that I would like to have a lot more of, and the way that I find it most successful is online. Mm-hmm. So you can use a website called Watch Together. I'm pretty sure Discord like has that integrated now. Uh, any way that you can yeah. play a soundtrack at the same time. A lot of the virtual tabletops have them. You can load up playlists, mm-hmm. all of this stuff. Yeah. Um, Sirenscape yeah. is actually made by uh, yeah. a local Aussie guy, part of the Dice Storm. Sirenscape's um, great. Go check out Sirenscape if you want like actual <laughs> sound sets with sound effects and customizable mm. lists, and you can make it really immersive in your own thing. Um, uh, a quick, yeah. beautiful place yeah. to go is Michael Gelfi on YouTube. I've used his stuff on previous mm-hmm. streams. His work is fantastic. He does beautiful compilations as well as singular soundtracks that really emphasize a certain no to a certain scene set and yeah. a feeling oh, and everything. Well, um, so, I don't know what just happened there, but things are going yeah. to go a bit strange because it appears we have lost one of our uh, video feeds. So I'm not oh. sure. It appears to video still be on the where? stream. It's all there working on my side. Okay. Yeah, okay, see. so it was all working on the stream, but we lost you. Yeah. Oh, that that's was fine. Odd, but it's fine I on went stream. Nowhere. Hi. Yeah, the chef is always here. Um, but music, a comment on music, though, I love using music, but I yep. find because I run the bulk of my games online, mm. it's difficult. There used to be a fantastic Discord bot that yeah. you could just stream music through, and then because mm-hmm. of copyright issues and, you know, not yeah. being able to pay artists properly, that went. Um, but 
and in person games it adds to the workload so i love the idea of mm. using music mm. but i think when you're running one shots particularly because there's a lot yeah. to take and you have a lot of newer players um i think it is an interesting it to me it puts a bit more load on and we talked at the start about yeah. dms mm. feeling pressured to do things yeah um it oh, can yeah. add to the load but for some people it can also <laughs> just help them get into mood get mm. into the uh Get into yeah. the get into the mood. That's not how sentences work, is it? It's it's close. Sure. It works. It works for me. I mean, I was going to yeah, say. I think a- that's a really good point about the whole idea of the level of work. Go for it, Jared. What were you going to say? Yeah, we did start with. Hey, like, no, no pressure. Like, you don't need to do all these amazing things. We proceed to list and encourage all of these cool things you can do. But this is, we're, we're giving you, we're giving you a buffet. You can choose what works for you. That's the idea. Um, but yeah, just on the on the live music, it is that yeah. it's how do you actually do it? Because the, the way I've worked, found works is a Bluetooth speaker under the table, because then it's quite mm. muted. Mm. It's directly near. It's yep. as closest to the players as being in yep. the middle. Everyone can hear each other across the table. And I have. Yeah. Yeah. Massive rule, no soundtracks, mm. no cinematic songs, no music you know. It breaks immersion. Yeah. You're listening to the Minds of yeah. Moria theme song while they're out yeah. on the high seas or they're listening to yeah. the Pirates of the Caribbean da, 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 while they're in the middle of the Underdark. It's just, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so unless you curate the hell out of your playlist and you really um, want to spend that time, focus go for is what it. it is. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that's it. And it takes me, time to curate yeah. these things. Yeah. yeah like Sorry, I used to be a DJ. No, all good. I used to be a DJ. I love doing that. I've done that for like one or two games in the past. And for me, music is my focus tool. Mm. Like if I have something going in here, I can really just mm. concentrate on one thing. So mm. I know that that's not for everyone. And I'm not going to put yeah. that out on the players and be like, hey, guys, listen to this. This is great. I put all the effort into this. And then everybody's like, yeah. what? Yeah. Um, and you don't have that luxury as well at a game store, yeah. for example. I just can't do that yeah. at a game store because yeah, you can't do that. Cloud games Loss are really popular. Point. Well, Loz makes a really interesting point that as a player, they run sound if the GM or DM. <laughs> that is an idea mm-hmm. I hadn't even thought about, well, but that is such a great idea. And I've got some lessons. music producers that play in my games. And I'm like, mm-hmm. hmm. That's a good point. Well, I've got in, my, in the games that I've run as well, there's a really, um, uh, really great player, a good friend who actually pulled one of our groups together. And she, um, eventually we talked about it and I said, would you be interested in pulling audio together mm-hmm. for the games? She's like, yeah, sure. So it's literally, we'll be playing the game and we've, and I'm, like you said, this is if you have the time and if it's mm-hmm. interesting to you. I think it's, yeah, it's, yeah. if you're not interested in doing this, don't do it. But yeah. it's like if it's something you want to try, and I had no idea how to do it to start with, but it was like uh, for the tabletop games, mm-hmm. uh, it can be nice to have that Atmos in the background. So I started mm-hmm. trying it and I started collecting different atmospheres, whether it be musical uh, yeah. atmosphere a mood or if it's the actual atmosphere mm-hmm. of a swamp or a tavern yep. or a mountaintop or whatever and so we talked and she said yeah i'd love to and i said and if you mm-hmm. don't mind if i asked during the game can we switch it to this she said absolutely mm-hmm. we don't even talk now because we've been doing it so long and i was like all of a sudden this is this like thing comes out of the dark or whatever and she's like okay we're into a battle thing and so it all of a sudden just awesome. escalates and we're like this is great oh, much- and so yeah that yeah Hi. What what do you use Spotify or um, mm. I don't know music? What what actual tool do you use for that? It's a good point because you can have preset. It does take work if you want to do curate. Mm. If you want to curate music beforehand, yeah. I've got a, a thing called Tidal, which is an, it's basically okay. a different version of Spotify. Um, yeah. And I usually just make favorites and a playlist for a particular kind yeah. of theme, and then just press play, or I just select one yeah. sort of like theme, and I'll go with that mm. one, and then just loop yeah. it. And if that's working, if I need to switch mood, then I'll switch mm. to another one. And it's great because it does, it just changes the mood of a scene. Mm. Oh God, it yeah. can be work. That's why yeah. I'd recommend yeah. it only if you're keen to try it out. Absolutely, because mm. it's like getting it's a skill set, and it's like that's yeah. why I can see a lot of different players and GMs really lean on what are the things that they really enjoy doing, um, yeah. and I really encourage that. I think it's a really yeah. good way of doing it. So absolutely. I, I was think Meet yeah. the Moose makes a good point. You can yes. find royalty-free Atmos. I would put a caution oh, on yeah. that. So because I stream a lot of games, I will try and get yeah. royalty-free um, mm. background music because I'll put that over the stream. 
it can sometimes surprise you yeah. it would be the only thing. I don't know. I'll have to find it. I'm sure yeah. I have a clip somewhere that was <laughs> dark or in a dungeon and it was spooky and it was threatening and ominous. And the music came up with some real circus-sounding tunes. <laughs> Yeah, it depends on what we get from here. It can be interesting. Oh, we've got some good things coming up. We've got Pocket Bar. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, just be, yeah. be yeah. aware. So I think you can curate. You can also awesome. shortcut like I do by finding a playlist, but just be prepared yeah. for, you know, Circus Oz to suddenly intrude into <laughs> your very dark and be ready to hit skip. <laughs> there's a few and there's a few apps out there now. It's like really mm. there's a lot now we can choose from. Like someone mentions or Pocket Bar, there's a really interesting yeah. app. Is it oh my gosh, I found well? Bardcore. Somebody was playing this. Okay. Trials from AB Original was playing music and it's Bard versions of popular <laughs> tunes. Yeah. Like Excellent. we're talking Rage Against the Machine done by yep. a Bard. Yep. I will find the playlist and pop it in the Discord because it was amazing. Sorry, that was a complete aside, but I just remembered no, it. This is good. It it really that's cool. I don't know it in my games. Yeah. Okay, no. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask one other question about the music and audio thing as well. I've actually sometimes felt a character – I have, like you said about having a picture, and I know that mm. for me, actually in our AI game, we had the total druid, uh, sorry, total yeah. ranger that I've got. I eventually started coming up with, okay, I want to look at total images and just see what they're like. Yeah. And I got obsessed until it was the right one. And I was like, yep. yeah, that's the one. And it took me a Interest while, and I find I do that a lot. But do you guys do something like that as well? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's the only reason I started using I'll Pinterest. I certainly come up with the idea. <laughs> I have got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, have I have got. got for that. It's like, I'm not. I'm not yes. the kind of so like, player who just makes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say on that note because you've got the images that can be inspiring, yeah. but I also use music sometimes. I have some characters, particularly when I'm running as a GM, I'm trying to get that hook. And sometimes it can be an image, or sometimes it's like uh, Thea. I love what you said about having a, a belief that they have. Mm. Um, I love in D&D how they've got ideals, bonds, flaws, and yeah. personality, which is just a sentence. And I'm like, I keep reminding myself of that for certain characters because it just makes it so yeah. easy to go, they wouldn't do this because of this. And I'm like, yeah, okay, and how would they speak? Mm. Sometimes I've had a song, and a song is just like, if I remember that song for this character, um, you said Rage Against the Machine, I'm thinking for a particularly, you know, violent, angry yeah. kind of character, you could just see this, like, rebelling against the system, and you have that in the background, and that could just take you yeah. into whatever that is, or have something just like a gentle melody for this particularly engaging kind of like quiet, tranquil druid or something in the place, just having that in the back of your mind, I see you nodding, Jared, as well, is mm -hmm. inspiring because it just, just it just takes you there. Today, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> what did you I had to you move a customer's car. The, the first car I had to move at work this morning, uh, it's great when customers leave their radios on because I get to know oh. what they listen to. And sometimes it's ABC <laughs> News, I get a snippet of something. This was ABC <laughs> Classical. And now we listen oh, to yes. something <laughs> old in E minor. And then <laughs> it was just this cacophony of epic. Epic <laughs> classical music, and Amazing. I threw the windows down, cranked the audio, and drove through the workshop. <laughs> morning, everybody. Good morning. So, yeah, having a theme song Amazing. for your NPCs and for key moments, I'm all about yeah. it because I had my own theme music today. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's like why you have walkout songs for people doing boxing or, yeah. you know, MMA, anything. Hell, um, our rap battles that I do for fun sometimes, we have walkout songs. Yeah. You know, it is yeah. It's about <laughs> capturing that mood. And I kind of yeah. think that brings us full circle to what we were talking about at the start is mm -hmm. some people will dress up to get into their character. Some people will have a voice that is their character and it's wonderful and it gets them into it. You might have a theme song. Mm. You know, and it could be yeah. it could be "Wannabe" by the Spice Girls. It could be <laughs> you know "Black Submarine." It could be anything. Yeah, little girl, go on, chinchilla, listen to it. It's good. Um, but anything that sort of gets you into that character, I think, when we talk yeah. about inspiration and role playing, mm. it's it's what works for you. It's what you have fun with, and that's okay. Mm. You know, yep. all of that 
is valid and acceptable because it's all about having fun your way yeah. and accepting other people. It's See you, Mies. Been a pleasure. Thank you, Mies. Right. Thank you guys in the chat because we do uh, – that's a really good way to kind of get close to an end because it's yeah. so much about this as well. I think it was a really great way to wrap about saying mm. this is there are no limits in a way to what's inspiring to actually bring your character to life and what's going to give you that yeah. hook in there. And I think that's yeah. why we love this. I know I do, and we've talked a lot about this. And we, thanks to you guys in the chat for some of your thoughts there. Mm. It's really helped give an idea of just the range of creativity Mm. Love the idea of that 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 was brought up. That the more you try, then the more confident you'll get anyway, and you just become more fluent in it. It'll become more a safe space for people to try really fun things. Um, so, guys, thank you so much. Um, it yeah. is time to to wrap up this week for the social pillar. Um, and thanks everyone for your uh, contributions. Uh, Jared, though, would you like to tell us about next week? What have we got on the program for um, the social pillar? Guys. We've got a plan. <laughs> we did it. We actually we made it. it. We are we including a little three arc, little little three episode, little little snippet. <laughs> um, basically, we're going to be wrapping up this idea of inspiring things. Uh, we've talked so much about literature in our episode previous. We've talked mm. about all the cool little things that make your character and your games amazing now. And my favorite way to actually get inspiration, creative ideas, and to you know really get inspired is film and tv uh yes. i don't think there's a, a a more fantastic way when you have this visual audio complex mm. you know you've got beautiful characters you've got the acting you've got it all there out mm. on out on the screen um but how i like to reverse engineer that for my games is what i would like to talk about and that's the plan I can't wait to talk next about week. it. I was too, I really wanted to jump in now, but it's like we'll talk next week about film and TV inspiration. Um, and uh, just wrapping up for tonight, thank you, guys. Um, Thea, how can people catch up with us as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, please join us on our socials. Wait, I have to go back to our channel now. <laughs> I've been searching for people to raid. But, uh, yeah, we've got some socials. We've got YouTube, which is coming. Yes. The YouTube yes. is there. We'll coming out More content is coming. There's content there. Yeah. Don't season two out. will be coming. There is content. There is lots of stuff. Season one, if you have only just recently joined us for seasons two and three, go back mm -hmm. and check out season one. Season two will be there. We'll just hear yes. the wet whistle. We yes. are. Um, we have a Discord. We, we have. We will have a TikTok when people. We also only have 15 seconds until an ad break rolls. <laughs> So okay, ten seconds. Fun. We love Good you. Night, Thanks for tuning Continue in. We're hanging around the Discord afterwards. Go check out the link. We love you. Bye.